uh, because all these different symbols that I'm going to talk about now are different expressions of the same frequency state. So you look at this crop circle from uh, England this year, and it is a hexagon. But a hexagon is a flattened out cube. So when you look at it from another angle, it's a cube. Well, it just so happens that an ancient symbol of Saturn is the cube, especially the black cube. And I would suggest that's what they are. The Kaaba, the focus of worship in, in um, Islam, Kaaba means cube. The Teflin, the cube on the head in Judaism. And when people go to uh, worship around the Kaaba, they're told to pray in concentric circles. Remind you of anything? And they're told to walk around it and their energy can be trawled. And if you focus on something that represents Saturn, Saturn is where the energy goes. In, in Judaism, they have Solomon's temple. Every syllable of Solomon means the sun. And the Holy of Holies in the so-called Solomon's temple was supposed to be a cube. They talk in uh, Revelation about the new Jerusalem in cube terms. There's these massive cubes that they use. This is outside the... Um, uh, uh, one of the banks uh, near Wall Street, near where the protests are. And you see these black cubes and cubes like used by, uh, by Apple and stuff. Saturn symbolism. In uh, uh, Doctor Who, they had this recent one where they, we, the Earth was invaded by black cubes. Star Trek, you had the Borg, who were these cyborg-like, exactly as the, um, are, are described by the, uh, the Gnostics of the Archons. And they used to move around in these cubes. If you uh, geometrically represent the cross, then it is a flattened out cube. When you look at the, uh, the uh, depictions of, 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 of these uh, people, not, not Lady Gaga, but others, these religious leaders with the halo, well, that comes from Saturn as well, that halo when, when that luminous crescent was in that position. Astrologically, that's the symbol of Saturn. And what they uh, symbolized this as was the sickle and the hammer. And when the Rothschilds created um, the Soviet Union, provable fact if you look at the evidence, they used the symbol of Saturn as the symbol of the Soviet Union. There's the, that symbol on this guy from the Brotherhood of Saturn. The uh, Jesuits are a major secret society in this global network, and there's the symbol of Saturn in their uh, symbolism, very bloody clearly. The... Uh, the snake on the cross also relates to this in, in some ways. Now, this is going to take us uh, forward here because the god of Saturn of the Greeks was called Kronos. And Kronos was, because he was the god Saturn, the, the sickle, the scythe, was represented as uh, holding the scythe. And also, he was depicted as the god of time. And he had the beard, uh, the white beard. And he became Old Father Time. That's Kronos. That's the god of Saturn. He also became the Grim Reaper because Saturn is the planet, I say, son of death. Um, and Kronos became crown, a symbol of the bloodlines. Uh, uh, Kali, uh, a goddess related to Saturn, uh, it was called the Black One and uh, the, the goddess of time, depicted with a protruding tongue. There's Madonna again. I mean, she must have the bloody book she works through, this one. <laughs> the god El, the Hebrew god El, was their god of Saturn. So El and Elohim are demiurge and archons, I would suggest. So we have Archangel Els, Mike El, Gabriel El, Yuri El, Raphael Another name for Jesus, Emmanuel. We have the Gospels, Chapel, Elders, elevated to the priesthood. Elections, where pawns are elected to serve the elite. We have Isis, Ra, El, the all names relating to Saturn. Saturn, Kronos, Satan, Black Sun, Dark Lord, they're all the same thing. The expression of this force. And here you have Moloch. They worship at Bohemian Grove, and he is a god of Saturn, this recurring theme. They also represent um, Moloch as a bull, as I said earlier, and so you have that as the uh, symbol of Wall Street. And the golden calf in the Bible is Moloch, Saturn. The Greeks talked about Saturn uh, used to eat his own children. And here's the colors of Satanism and the colors of Saturn, black and red, same as the royal protocol. 
the, the robes of the judge, the robes of the uh, clergy, the, the square hats of um, uh, the universities, the, the, the hammer that the judge uses, it's all Saturn symbolism. You see Saturn profusely used in symbolism of the corporate world. And this, uh, well, this earth, wind and fire, they got the bloody set. Um, there's the eye, there's the six-pointed star, there's the step pyramid, there's the wing disc, and there's bloody Saturn. And then, therefore, you look at religions and secret societies and Satanism, they're worshipping Saturn. Then you look astrologically, in other words, energetically. Banking is astrologically ruled by Saturn. Politics and institutions of state at all levels, astrologically ruled by Saturn. Corporations, astrologically ruled by Saturn. Law and court system, astrologically ruled by Saturn. Science, astrologically ruled by Saturn. Saturn worship, Satan worship. And it's interesting that you have the uh, god of Saturn, uh, Kronos, with the beard, and, and represent, and all these bloody religions, they have bloody beards. And then you have God depicted, depicted as a man with a white beard on a cloud or on a throne. And there's God, Charlton Heston type God. That's Yahweh depicted with a, with a beard and stuff. And then we have Santa with the white beard. Santa, anagram of Satan from Saturnalia. Saturnalia was a festival in Rome where they worshipped the god Saturn and they gave, uh, it was in the same period to the run up to our Christmas and they gave gifts, they decorated trees and they hung sprigs of bloody holly. So that is Saturn symbolism, a man with a white beard. This is Ancient of Days, a painting by William Blake from I think 1794 or something like that. Ancient of Days is an old name for God. And he's depicting God. He was a very deep esoteric thinker and, and great knowledge, uh, William Blake. And uh, he's depicting God with the white beard. That's Saturn, Kronos. On the GE building in the Rockefeller uh, Center in New York, there's Kronos again. Now, the Freemasons, they call their God the great architect of the universe. The Demiurge was known by the Gnostics as the great architect of the universe which brings us to the white-bearded architect of the Matrix, in the Matrix movie series. So where is this leading us? Well, again, this needs to go, if we're going to go anywhere with this, because I'm going into fantastic areas here, but this is where the information has taken me very, very clearly. Um, and the hardest thing to see is what is in front of your eyes, as this man rightly said. The Gnostics talked about the fact that the Archons make something appear to happen that does not actually happen. They can induce a virtual reality experience. The uh, Islamic people and pre-Islamic people talk about the jinn manipulating humans by creating illusions. I was uh, in New York in 2010 and someone took me to the subway station for Ground Zero. And when I saw it, it was like, whoa, it hit me big time. There was, first of all, these eyes all along the platforms. But there is this massive depiction of the world on the floor. And then there's an eye. And going out from this eye are these broadcast transmissions. And that hit me so powerfully. And Neil Haig was with me. And we kind of looked at each other and said, that's Saturn, isn't it? And... Remember, physicists have said uh, only this last few days, they may have evidence the universe is a computer simulation. Well, I say that it's a virtual reality, which has been hacked into, and that hack is the reality that we're experiencing, the fake reality. And that hack, I say, comes from Saturn. Because I'm saying that these rings are actually a massive broadcast transmission system which is broadcasting a fake reality within the frequency range that we are decoding, and therefore we are picking up that uh, fake reality. When the Cassini spacecraft arrived at Saturn in 2004, um, found many things that was unexplainable. It, you know, things like the, the hexagon North Pole storm and stuff like that. But they also found extraordinarily powerful sound coming from Saturn. 
This is, this is part of what they recorded. Nice man. Um, and I got uh, sent this by a sound engineer, works in sound engineering for a living, and it's one of the rings of Saturn, and he said, I see that every day. That's bloody sound. They're sound waves. And this is in cymatics. This is a six-pointed star. And of course, we have the hexagon going round and round and round at Saturn's North Pole. This is a standing wave created by sound, rings. Uh, this is at the south pole of Saturn, and it's a permanent ice storm. This is a standing wave created by sound. And these are symbols created by sound, like somatics. And a certain frequency created this perfect six pointed star with the hexagon in the middle and the hexagon there. Therefore, the sound creates the frequency, uh, creates the symbol, and in the same way, the symbol represents the sound and the frequency. The, the, the symbols are just holographic representations of vibrational waveform states. I would suggest in this, these symbols cases, representatives of the sound frequency coming off Saturn. Same with all these symbols and numerological manipulations. The sound and the symbol are different expressions of the same thing. Thus, if we in the holographic realm are constantly bombarded with these symbols, it is on an energetic level feeding us the frequency field of what they represent. And Saturn, when described pre-cataclysmic, didn't have rings. So where'd they come from? Well, maybe it had rings, but it weren't rings we could see. We can see them now. Well, this guy, Norman Bergeron, has a long, he's in his 90s now, I think. He has a long, long history in space research, technological research, going way back. And his life changed when he started studying the pictures that came back from the Voyager 1 and 2 space uh, expeditions to Saturn. They arrived in 1918, 81. Because when he studied them, he realized there was something very strange about Saturn's rings. And he said this in his book, The Ringmakers of Saturn. Several years ago, a number of folks in the astrology and uh, astronomy, rather, and physics world began theorizing that these rings had to be much younger than the universe, perhaps only about 100 million years old. But one pair of pictures shows a change in five minutes. An impression is conveyed that the latest reported measurements purport to be the true ones, when in reality, all might uh, quite nearly be correct at the time of observation. General reluctance to accept variable ring system geometry occurs because of apparent failure to identify a physical mechanism suitable for producing recurrent change. In other words, classic mainstream science, if we can't explain it, we'll kid ourselves it doesn't exist. And he also found these in the pictures coming back from Voyager, and the Cassini ones found them too. And he calls them electromagnetic vehicles, and they are massive. Some of them several times bigger than the Earth. But again, we need to move our sense of perception. In terms of size uh, representation, this is the Earth against the size of Saturn. They're not, talk they're not talking the same perception of big um, in terms of outside of the Earth. And here are some of the other pictures of these electromagnetic vehicles picked up by these NASA craft. Why aren't they all in the papers being talked about? You think, what the hell is this? No, no, nothing. Thanks to Bergeron, we've, we've, we've seen the, their existence. 